Aklavik Northwest Territories is one of the six communities in the Inuvialuit settlement region in Canada's Western Arctic. Located on the Peel River in the Mackenzie Delta, Aklavik is not far from the foot of the Richardson Mountains. This small community was once a bustling regional center, but because it was prone to flooding and erosion, the government of the time decided that it would build a brand new town that would offer all the amenities of a southern town. The new site was called East 3 and would later be named Inuvik. Most residents of Aklavik didn't believe the theory that their community was sinking and decided to remain in good old AK, rather than moving to the bright, shiny new community of Inuvik Thus the community motto was born. The hamlet of Aklavik's famous expression, never say die, can be seen throughout the community. Although the new administrative center of Inuvik was built to replace Aklavik, the residents remained. The community did not sink, and all services are still available above sea level. To show their community spirit, the residents of Aklavik wrote a song that explains the story of their refusal to move to Inuvik. And in this song, they incorporated their community motto, never say die. The Aklavik song can still be heard at community events today. Here is Richard Gordon's rendition of the Aklavik song performed at the 2003 Mad Trapper Rendezvous. So Aklavik used to be our regional center, but the government decided in the mid-1950s that this beautiful place on the Peel River, close by the mountains, would sink and disappear into the delta. They encouraged everyone to move to the bright new shiny town of Inuvik, but instead of packing up and leaving their home, the residents of Aklavik refused. The government also decided that they would take our children and raise them in the residential school system. Can you imagine being a small child of five years old with no mother's kisses and hugs, no fathers to guide and encourage you, and no grandparents to spoil you? But more importantly, absolutely no cultural pride and traditional values instilled in you. Because children can't be raised by systems, they need to get this knowledge from their parents. The multi-generational impacts of the residential school system are still haunting us today. We have generations of Inavaluit and Gwich'in who cannot speak their own language. But instead of giving up and moving on, in the true never-say-die spirit, 
the residents of Aklavik once again refused to give up. In the spring of 2003, I spent a day with the Inavalakton and Gwich'in language classes at the Moose Kerr School in Aklavik. Brenda Benawal was the Inavalakton language instructor and Annalie McLeod is the Gwich'in language instructor. They allowed me to observe their classes to learn how they are fighting to keep their languages alive by teaching them to Aklavik's youth. Language come back to the language because it's so important. And our elders, we don't have very few elders left. So we just try and make the students understand our language is so important. Yeah. And I try to have lots of my words up on the board and then they start learning, they start reading, they start trying to say these words and I help them out. Yeah, so it's so important for the students to know who they are and where they come from. For me, I wasn't um, brought up with the language. However, um, my parents were, but at that time, uh, they were taught, uh, told not to speak the language. So the, um, it sort of was lost at that stage. And with my generation, um, it was really unfortunate that we, we didn't, we weren't taught. And um, so I thought about it, and I thought, well, no one's going to actually learn a lesson, uh, the, the language, if you don't actually do it yourself. So I've, uh, I've taken upon myself to um, learn as much as I can. And the best way to learn is um, also listening to the Aboriginal um, programs on CBC. I listen to that. And, um, I always tell the kids that you're never too old to learn. It's something that you can always um, carry with you always. You can cherish it. And if you learn from your parents or your grandparents, that's, it's more at heart that um, it's always going to be here and to be proud of your language. And that um, when you learn it, you'll always have that gift to pass on to your children or your great-grandchildren. So. Um, I really stress that to the kids and looking at them now through the whole year, um, I think they really understand now what it means to have it here and um, they're starting to go home and speak to their parents and for me that, that really touches the heart and it'll, they'll always keep that. When Swangin returns, we'll talk to Brenda and Annalie about why they decided to become language teachers. Yeah. What are you doing? I am fishing. I am picking berries. What is the boy doing? Before the break, we talked about the loss of our language in the region. Brenda Benoit and Annalie McLeod are language teachers at the Moose Kerr School in Aklavik. We asked them why they decided to become language instructors. I subbed here a few times years ago and it was really interesting. Plus, too, another thing is that I wanted to get my language back, like learn with the students. And I've, my parents taught me so much, they talked to me in the language but I have a hard time to speak. So I thought now is a good time for me to learn with the children. That's why I decided to become an Inavalican teacher. Uh, three years ago, they were really short on casuals. And the principal by the name of Derek Johnson uh, approached me to come in and work casual for a week. And uh, from there, um, I stayed on for a month and then uh, stayed on for the whole school year. And I found it really interesting and I think I found uh, something that I can focus on as a career. Traditionally games such as the harpoon throw, the knuckle hop and the bachuk were used to teach skills such as strength, flexibility, endurance and hand-eye coordination. We asked how games are incorporated into the children's language instruction. I tried uh, teaching 
sort of the, the same old system. Even when I went to school, it was just a lot of talking and a lot of um, taking notes on a board. And uh, I just went by my experience and I thought, well, if it didn't work very well for me, then it's about time I tried to make a change. So I tried games and I found that it um, really worked. Uh, the kids really enjoyed it. They were actually learning and having fun at the same time. And that's the way our language should be. I use, I play games with the students that way they're so excited and they learn more when they play together and work together. It's just not, you know, pushing pencil and um, writing all the time. When you play games with them, they find it more fun and more exciting. So I use a game, try to use most games with the students. They can rock, they can rock, they can rock, they got it all in order? E, E. Many of our drum dance songs tell a story. The songs and the motions of the dancers make the stories come alive. Annalie has recognized the importance of teaching our youth through song and has taken this traditional method and utilizes it with a thoroughly modern twist. Another tool that I use especially for the elementary students is uh, singing a lot of songs. Um, with the singing part of the activities it sort of gets them to work on speaking and pronouncing words and um, with the high school students too. I try and get them to sing a few songs and they've tried and one that um, I really try and push here is uh, the Canadian Anthem so we try and sing that a lot and I think um, in order for me to get them to actually sing that at one time I turned and uh, did, a, did the song for them in rap and that sort of caught the grade nine's attention and at a grade nine you're sort of like in your teens and it's sort of not cool but uh, that really worked and it got them really singing. The Inavalkton class also learns the Canadian anthem in their language. Canada, no, no. Klavik is a mixed community with both Inavalut and Gwich'in. I asked the teachers how they work together in the school. We plan our unit, like when we finish one unit, we start another one, we work together and we decide, we plan together what we're going to do next. And then when we select the unit, we, we work together and decide. She put the words in her language and I put the words in my language and we plan from there what we're going to do with our students. 
and we um, spend time in each other's class like we I review with the students our words and then we go next door to Anna's class and we play games with I using my words and she's, she's using her words and we have fun with the students. Yeah. What's one of the values there's uh, friendship and sharing and caring and uh, it's true we are um, a mixed culture here but in every culture uh, you're always taught to help one another to, to um, give them advice and things and Brenda and I really work together. We even took the course together in Inuvik and um, we're, we're at a stage right now where we both know what is going to be said even before it's said. Uh, we work closely along with our lesson plans. Whatever I'm teaching, whatever lesson I'm teaching, I go to her and we make sure that the same lessons are the same, our sentence patterns are the same. And um, and basically, we just give each other all the support we can. And if there is any questions, or um, we're always open to one another. Uh, we're the best thing about it too. We're right one beside each other. So a lot of um, what we teach the kids is that um, it doesn't matter what background you are. It's um, how you work together. It, Anything is possible if you have a positive attitude and and um, you're open-minded and um, you look at things in a positive way. So um, a lot you can see us working together here a lot. And the best part of um, positivity um, is laughing. So we do a lot of laughing and um, sharing. So that that really is a positive thing for the kids. try to keep our, our students as a unity as one, like, you know, we're all God's children. I always tell my students, we're all God's children, so it's okay, you know, we could share together and play games together and work together. This is how, I mean, like me and Anna being a role model for them, we work together, we try to be close together all the time. So I call Anna my Anyas. <laughs> We asked the language teachers at the Moose Curse School what their favorite duties are. It's actually being with the kids and learning with the kids because um, I'm learning along with them and, they, uh, and there's sort of a really nice uh, trusting bond because I'm sort of in with them and we're learning together so uh, it, it's, that's the part I really enjoy is coming here every morning and working with the kids. Playing games with the students, learning new words, making material for the students, and learning the basic language, reading together in the language, reading stories together, and speaking in the language especially. What are some of the challenges of your position? Uh, some of the challenges is, is that um, some of the words I don't really know. And, but with the challenges, I sort of look forward to them because it sort of pushes me to go out and ask community members and family like how to pronounce the words or, or if I'm saying them correctly. Or, um, part of life is you're always going to come up with challenges and I look at them positively and, and use it to my advantage. So um, just to let people know that um, every day is just a challenge and just take it one step at a time. Okay, Are you ready? Yeah. For me? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Valley. I'm not going to say it in the language, you have to find it in which in Valley. Challenges. I look forward to doing the dictionary with the students. It's the basic reading, like reading the 
learning how to read the words in long sentences and conversations with the students. That, I enjoy that. It's a big challenge, but I um, work with the students. We get along with the older grades. They're teaching me and I'm teaching them, so it's the hardest part. You know. Oh, it just makes me so glad that, like inside, I, um, I feel like a big lump in my throat and I just want to grab them and hug them and like, you know, if one of the students I met uptown one day and said, El Hari, can I get bitten? I said, I can like I was just so excited and I said, ah, oh. and then the little older ones, I could talk to them in my language, just like conversation, like, where are you going? You're going uptown for lunch and that kind of thing. I talk to them in that language and then they just answer back and I'm just smiling, just standing there, just ah, like, you know, just sh shock me. But I feel so happy when I hear the students talk, you know, talk to me all the time. Even after hours uptown and that day, El Harvey, can I bit? Namang nakpit, you know, things like that. They talk to me, just the basic. I teach them here. It's starting to come out now in the students. So I really, I feel so happy when they start talking like that. And I just feel like crying, a big lump in my throat. And I just want to hug them and squeeze them. And it's so good. It's such a good feeling to hear students start speaking, start saying our common words, questions. They ask me questions in their language. and I'm, Achoo! <laughs> so, I enjoy it. I'm glad the students are learning. My language is in the My language is in the My language is in the uh, To be honest with you, sometimes you know, and you get that lump in your throat and your eyes just want to water. I feel so proud of them because um, they've come a long way. And, uh, and playing these games with them and sometimes I get into it with them. And um, to me, even though like they have all their parents and their grandparents out there, and if I'm not here for the day, I'm wondering, what are my kids doing? Because I sort of uh, adopted them into my family and they're all here. So whenever they, they do something, I really praise them for it. I always uh, let them know that um, they're doing so well. And for them to be speaking in sentences and actually writing, that's the truly biggest gift of all because um, you, you don't see very much people out there that um, can actually speak in sentences at their age and actually writing it because that's one thing that um, we're actually losing as well as a lot of people that can't read and write the language. And um, I'm so proud of them. I'm proud of every one of them. Shuri Trista Vaji, my language is Gwich'in. My name is Clinton and my language is Gwich'in. My name is Annalie McLeod and my language is Gwich'in.